offense was on fire in this one. You know who had a really underrated game, though? Freddie Anderson. Don't you think so? I said, you know who had a really underrated game? Freddie Anderson. I heard you, all right. Hi. Victory for me. I have no idea what I'm doing. God. Boys, we're gonna do something a little different today. I want you to picture this, all right? You're not victory puppies, you're cannon dogs. You, you're the brave one. You're not afraid of loud bangs. In fact, you bark at the door every time you see your own shadow. You, you're a little bit more timid. You hide under the bed every Canada day. Yeah, that's right. Now go out and get them, boys. And action. Brilliant! You sit there calm as always, knowing that whether or not the power play goes 0 for 17, they still have the sickest personnel ever. Whereas you simply wave goodbye to your problem! This is why I love you, boys! We got a hit! Oh, quit fighting over time in the spotlight! You're both gonna be stopped! Iggy drooled all over my pants. Leafs win! 5 to 4 over the Florida Panthers! Listen, I'll dance all I want! Because if the theater can churn out a performance like that, we need to start calling Scotiabank Arena Budway. Matthews, two goals. Tavares, two goals. Riley, ho-hum, four assists. Marner, three points, wasn't even named one of the three stars. Maybe Paul was right. Man, Freddie was solid. Zaitsev did an amazing job breaking up a two-on-one. Tyler Ennis was a nightmare for the Panthers all night. Freddie Gauthier almost went bar down. Even Martin Marinson looked great in this game, and he picked up an assist. The Leafs looked dominant for their second straight game, and over the the past two games, they have outscored their opponents 13 to 3. Is that good? I need a chart. What is it? The chart says it's good. Man, that team beat the Leafs on Saturday? You know what? Quickly, Panthers fans, if I were you, enough's enough. You need to go Howard Beal on this because the team made moves in the summer and I thought they were good ones. I just think this team is way too good on paper to be this bad. And all I know is that first, you've got to get mad. I don't know what to tell you to fix, whether it's the defense or the goaltending or the coaching. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a Panthers fan, damn it. My life has value. Network 1976 is a very good movie. All I know is that at some point, the Panthers need to stop being the maybe that it's always a no. Maybe they have the luxury of being like, well, I don't really think we've done anything wrong, so we're just gonna stay the course. But geez, these guys looked like they had a legitimate shot at getting a divisional playoff spot, forget a wild card, and now they've been pushed down by Buffalo. So I'd be yelling, do something, even if I didn't know what that something was. By this point, that's how I would feel if I were you. But back to the lease. Oh, they're good again, guys, it's okay. Seriously, we always hear Babs talking about starting on time and they didn't start on time in this one. Odd man rush like two seconds into the game. It's weird, after a six one win, you sort of forget the things you were yelling at your television in the first five minutes. Because it was weird. Both teams looked disinterested to start this one. Just sloppy, not crisp defense was optional. But after a few minutes, the Leafs started to pick it up. And sometimes I think we pay too much attention to the shot clock. I'm definitely guilty of that. The Leafs only outshot the Panthers 10 to 9 in the first, but no, no. The Leafs had the puck for most of the first period and they looked dominant. When you have the puck, you force the other team to make a play on you. When the other team has to make a play on you, sometimes they take a penalty. Aaron Eckblad takes an interference call on Andreas Janssen, shame on you. Speaking of which, we always, I always get mad at Mike Babcock when he doesn't take my lineup suggestions. I didn't suggest Andreas Janssen taking Zach Hyman's place while he was out, creating a lineup of Janssen, Tavares, and Marner. Uh, I wish I had. Very good job, Mike. They, and by they, I mean Andreas Janssen, almost scored earlier in the period, and he gets the Leafs on the power play. Riley at the point, gives it to Mitch. Oh, he's gonna do the Mitch thing! Matthews wide open, Tavares wide open. If that fails, this is how you don't defend the Leafs power play. Matthews bags it and he says it himself right after. Easy baby. Marner's 36th assist of the season leads to Matthews 18th goal of the season because you don't know the half and the Leafs are up 1-0 after 1. And their power play oh, finally scores. Okay, this is going to sound dumb, but their power play finally scores on the power play. They scored like two seconds after against New Jersey. I'm not going to let that go. Despite a couple gaffes in the first period, that was so encouraging. This game had every reason to suck. Dude, Thursday night game against Florida. After you win a game 7-2. That's got the potential for... <laughs> Not to mention Zach Hyman out of the lineup with an ankle injury. I don't know how serious that is yet. And Igor Ojiganov was feeling ill, so he takes the night off from Martin Marinson. Who is a Leaf, by the way? Justin Hall's like, hi. But it's a great sign that they didn't take the night off. They didn't sleep through the alarm. They wanted to keep momentum going after their 7-2 win against New Jersey. They wanted revenge against the Panthers for beating them on Hockey Night in Canada less than a week prior. And 
think of what a huge opportunity this is. Martin Marinson so rarely gets in the lineup. And you're Andreas Janssen. You've been a healthy scratch at times this season, and all of a sudden, you're with Tavares and Marner? No wonder he was on fire. Gotta be ready when opportunity knocks. Another interesting thing about that first period, and it was something people talked about throughout the game. Look at this. The Panthers ended up out hitting the Leafs 30-9. to And the Panthers definitely seemed to be trying to be physical in the first. Michael Haley was a factor. Or at least he tried to be. Because I think there's a difference between laying hits and being physical and hard to play against. It's easy to rack up your hit numbers when you don't have the puck. And it eventually led to a Leaf power play. And their power play was in a rut. And Marner connects with Matthews for the rut cracker. Thank you, good day! <laughs> Coffee's not just good, it's downright jolly. Second period. Gasperi Kapanen's got the puck. He doesn't need to be on stage to dance. Little pass to Morgan Riley. Over to Austin Ma Oh! What did the puck ever do to you? It's Christmas! Matthews with the left-handed Ovechkin Stamkos line A bomb. Old school. I didn't think Leafs took slap shots anymore. Riley is second assist of the game. Matthews is second goal of the game, and he is truly goofy. Dude, Tavares. Okay, first of all, I know it's Tavares, but I have to like override it in my brain every time, and it's hard. Spent half a Leaf games thinking about other things. What a pass by Tavares. Tavares. Look at Nylander go. Oh, it's Kapanen. Ooh, Kapanen with the slick. It's Nylander. What is up with Hainsey skates? Anyway, Matthews has his 19th goal of the season. Tavares is sitting at 21. His best goal scoring pace of his entire career. He's on pace to score over 50 goals. And Matthews has missed 14 games and he's almost tied him. God, I'm glad he's a Leaf. Speaking of glad he's a Leaf, Morgan Riley. Later in the frame, he sends a puck way down the ice. It almost gets a little bit deflected, but Connor Brown receives it. Shortly after, scramble in front. Kadri's in the crease. There's the puck there, ah! Get it, Nas, and he's like, I'm trying! And the puck goes in, but... So Luongo's immediately waving it off. The refs on the ice call it a goal. So Greg Millen's talking on the broadcast like, well, it's not a distinct kicking motion. But apparently the rule is either changed or there's a specific thing in the rule where that's not a goal. And Leaf fans, you gotta be for that. I, it's not Kadri's fault. He was getting yanked on. I, I thought it was a clear holding penalty. But you cannot allow someone to intentionally put their skate blade in the air, man. If it happened to the Leafs, we'd be furious. And those things are sharp. It was so close to Luongo's hand. Could slice open a finger. Could slice open his hand. Could maybe get a tendon. And at this point in his career, if he gets a bad enough injury, that could be curtains. Imagine that happens to Freddie and he misses like a month or the rest of the season. I'm not blaming Nas for trying, but for the good of the sport, that can't be a goal. But it's okay because very shortly after, Morgan Riley, Hail Mary. Panthers get a piece of it, but Connor Brown receives it, flying in on a two-on-one. Passes over to Woodja. Look at that! Nazem Kadri scores and he does the point and everything. Yes! He's a cheeky little troll, but he's our cheeky little troll, and it's 3 nothing Leafs after 2, almost at 1. Riley's third assist of the game, Brown's 10th assist of the season, he's been on fire lately with the assists, and Nas, getting that goal back, he struggled to score this season, but that's his night. And gosh, you know, Nas has been really struggling, you know, so it's good. Actually, I looked into it, uh, not so much. He's struggling to score goals, for sure. We focus on the fact that Nas got over 30 goals last season, again, but last season, he finished with 55 points. This season, after that goal, he's on pace for 54. 54 points for your third line center. Yeah, guys, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, but he's gonna get traded. Well, you know, the Leafs could also not do that. And the Leafs, nice little job defensively to end the second period after they kill a penalty because Martin Marinson held his stick, like his own, I mean, pokes the puck off of Mike Hoffman and then Hoffman steps on his stick. Don't know about that one, Chief. But all is well that ends with the Leafs 3-0 lead. Early in the third period, Tyler Ennis ruins Florida. Ennis the menace out here taking ankles, flying around the net. He's got like three guys on him, one of them finally trips him. That's Petrovic. He heads to the box. Leaves head to the power play. Power play right away gets some Matthews. Rah! Once that hat trick just misses. Leaves keep it in. Mitch Marner has it. And the Panthers say, all right, I think we got this figured out. Cover Matthews. Marner sees this. So he gives it to Kadri. And the Panthers say, oh no, get that guy. So Kadri gives it to Matthews. Puts it on net. The world's loneliest man in this game. Roberto Luongo makes a stop. John Tavares bags it in his super fun effort that I hope lasts all season to stay ahead of Austin Matthews in the goal department. He's up to 22 and the Leafs are up to 4 nothing. Not long after, Travis Dermott has the puck, shoots it on, bing! Oh! And even though there was no goal on the play, Luongo's like, I hate my life. He's one of those goalies who can't really hide his emotions and that summed up the Panthers' night. And the Panthers managed to clear it, but Martin Morenson gets it in the Leafs' end. And standing completely still, he sends a dart of a pass up the ice to Mitch Marner at the blue line. Marner's dancing, he's going around the net, he's going around the net. You thought? Sends it over to Tavares with Mountain Dew power. Bang! He gets his second of the game. Sorry, Austin. And who else feels a little bit bad? Me neither! Leafs up five to nothing. Is that good? And with that, the mercy pull for Roberto Luongo. Uh, who's coming in net? Who's their backup? Is it Michael Hutch? <gasps> 
James, it's uh, it's been a while. Did you see there's a new Bumblebee movie coming out? No, yeah, yeah, I'm doing great. I'm happy now, I'm really happy. I love James. Uh, uh, Fred, I just love him. He's so tall and brooding and, and said such a man, a Toba. Does that? It's obvious that it's not over for me. It'll never be fully over for me. Well, anyway, I'll leave you alone. You've clearly got a game to play and hey, hey what do you do? Get your hands off of me! And that's how I got kicked out of Scotiabank Arena. And Kadra's one timer, he stops! No, I'm not supposed to- ah! Boy, I'd sure love one of, or both of, Matthews and Tavares to get their hatch- Oh, feed Willie the puck so we can get his- No! Can we just cancel the rest of the game? Who else is cool with that? Panthers get on the power play. And they ruin Freddy's shutout! Damn my fickle heart! Frank Vitrano screening Freddy in front, no one's able to move him, and Henrik Borgman- Borgman? Borgstrom scores his first of the season and second of his career. I knew it was one of the Borgs. The ACC was great tonight because even though they were up five to nothing, they sounded genuinely bummed that his shutout got broken. And not to mention during my little soliloquy, they gave Reimer a standing ovation because they know that the only thing James Reimer ever did for the Leafs was his best. The teams he played behind were trash. In the 2013 season, a writer named Jesse Spector took heat for voting James Reimer as one of his Hart Trophy candidates. If you go back and watch the games he played in, you'll understand understand why! The Leafs got outshot 40 to 15 tonight and came away with a 2-1 win. Our game's number one star, Tyler Bozak. Frigga! Also the fact that they had four fights. Yeah! Oh, is this game still going on? Leafs on the power play again. We got a chance to give Johnny a hat trick. Maybe Austin? Marner tries to send a puck through the crease. No! I mean, yes? Oh, it wasn't even a hat trick. It went off one of the Panthers. You said you'd take care of him! Ugh, lost in the fact that James Reimer got scored on. That goal was actually hilarious because Tavares didn't get the hat trick. Matthews didn't get the hat trick. But slowly, one by one. No, what are you guys doing? Stop! Like a dozen fans at Scotiabank Arena thought that it was a hat trick. So they start chucking their hats on the ice. Someone threw their toque? Let that be the question of the game. If someone scores a hat trick and all you have is a toque, do you have to throw it? Because that's not a hat, it's a toque. A Santa hat's fine, that's seasonal and funny. But a toque? I'm torn on, I want your opinion. But also, it doesn't matter because it was Marner's goal. And if you want to know what Mitch Marner is like as a player, he was genuinely upset that he scored a goal. Did you read his lips? Fiddlesticks! Or something. It's Leafs win 6-1, to one, their second straight dominant game, and a heck of a way to start a stretch of three games in four nights. Questions. How was the ballet? Like the coffee? It was good. When will Morgan Riley be named captain? Like, come on, we all know it's gonna happen. I honestly, the Leafs have been so good without a captain, I just don't care. And more importantly, Morgan Riley is part of a leadership group. You can't just have one guy. I don't even know if it's beneficial to have like the head guy. Like we know Riley and Austin are big friends and they love Anderson and there's Tavares in there and Marner is obviously a leader too. They got a little pocket of old guys. They all seem to like each other is nice. So I don't really care. At this point, it'd be nice to see Riley get a Norris, but it'd be better to see him Popcorn. Which Marley, Moore, Marchment, Grundstrom, Engvall, do you think the Leafs will call up to replace Hyman? If it's Moore, do you think he'll actually play this time? Yeah, that's a tough one. I do think it's going to be Trevor Moore. Will he actually play? I don't know. Trevor Moore deserves to get into the lineup, not just for his play. He's been excellent in the AHL, but just for his being a soldier. So I know a lot of Leaf fans aren't exactly up to date on Marley's news. So the Marleys are really shorthanded on defense right now. There's some guys at the World Juniors, some guys who are injured. So Trevor Moore played like almost a full game on defense the other day and he got some points and they won. I would love to see him get in the lineup. Marner wasn't in the three stars last night because there were too many to choose from. Isn't that a glorious problem to have? Merry Christmas to you too Morgan. Oh my god yes! Can Willie score this weekend so I don't have to spend Christmas defending him to my relatives? Katie, for the love of God, yes! Half the tweets I see, half the tweets I got for this were about Nylander. They won six to one! Is it all right if I answer I don't care? The key is I don't think he's actually looked bad, and I don't know how many more times I gotta say this. And he's in there, and he's easy. He hit a couple guys yesterday, and he's hustling, and he's digging in the corners. His feet look fine to me. To me, it's his, like, every everything with his stick is a little off. He's not quite as crisp, but he's gonna get there, and when he does, it's gonna be wonderful. And dude, look at the Leafs record. Look at the standings. Think of how easy it's gonna be to change the subject this Christmas. But, uh, 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 don't get too far ahead of yourself. They still have two more games left this weekend. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Hey, have I mentioned this is in the description? Pre-order? Comes out in March? It's great. I wonder if James is in it.